live. And what's going to happen is I'm going to click record and then Siri is going to say, you're recording. And then we'll go. Okay. One sec. What's going on with this? Oh, don't say. Okay. And. Good afternoon and welcome to the Way to Wow show, People Making Money. I'm your host, Kevin Bemmel. Thank you very much for joining us. And my guest today is Marsha Collier. I'm going to introduce Marsha in just a moment, but I want to do what I normally do, which is just for a minute, talk about my guest from last week, um, John Rabino, a Navy colleague, friend of mine, and the co-founder and COO of JID Investments was my guest. And John talked about his career arc, starting at uh, um, going to college uh, to become basically a mariner and joining the Navy, and then on through to becoming um, the co-owner of a real estate investment company with his partner, David, and how he's built that company, starting from a $1,000 investment in, uh, I believe it was a single family residence, to the point where they have now placed over $25 million in capital in various real estate development projects. So it, Dave, um, David, David, his partner, John had several uh, key ideas for how we can build our professional lives, how we can start a business, or even just build our careers within a company that we work for. So I invite you to go to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash the way to wow show. And, and check out the episode with John, as well as several of the other guests we've had and, and the first two seasons of the show, which look a little bit different than this, but I think you'll enjoy them as well. So today, I have uh, my friend Marsha Collier as my guest. And Marsha Collier, I, I think it's fair to say, is the queen of Twitter. Um, if, if, if I had a, you know, a, a crown like the, the old margarine commercials, it would go bing and it would be on her, it would be on her head. And uh, I, really, what I know about using uh, social media, I learned in large part through watching what uh, Marsha does and, and, and the, the tremendous success that she's had. Uh, Marsha has had a varied career, and she's going to tell us about that today. Um, she's, but I can tell you, uh, as you might have seen in any of the ads I posted, she's an author who's written numerous books, selling over a million copies of those books. That in itself is, a, is an enormous achievement. So, Marsha, welcome to the Way to Wow show, People Making Money. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Kevin. That was a million in 2007. Oh, so in nobody's 2007. Come up with a, yeah, so nobody's come up with an official figure since. So well, it's got to be something like two or three million now, wouldn't it? I, I, don't, I probably two. Probably I, two. I, okay. Yeah. Hey, you know, you talk, a lot of the people you have on your seem intimidating to some people, but my number one message to people who want to get into business is you don't have to be a big business. There is a lot that comes with running a big business. You may not want that. I didn't want it. I'll talk to you a little bit about my background, but it was something I didn't want. I wanted more time with my family. Um, I didn't want the grief of going to bed every night thinking about you know, hiring this person, that person, uh, salaries, laws, the whole, I didn't want it. So at a certain point, I had a turning point and I stayed small and I did just fine, but just so happens at that point because of my relationship with my daughter, I started writing and it changed my whole life. But there's no job that's too small. Mm -hmm. Well, let's, you let's, can't think that you have to be a big business person. I was going to say, I've got a plumber who <laughs> <laughs> drives a great car. Mm -hmm. He lives in a beautiful home. Um, there is nothing wrong with wanting to be the best tradesman you possibly can. That oh, is a spectacular job. And there's so many people who aren't good at the trades out there that you could just study and get good at something and practice with somebody. You know, in the old days, we call them mentors now, but they used to call them a 
apprentices, mm-hmm. right? That's where you'd learn from somebody. Yeah, and you probably won't make a lot of money while you're learning, but you're going to learn a whole lot. And that's it. Just be open to whatever your heart says when it comes to business. Yeah, so, you know, when I was more actively coaching people coming out of the military, a lot of them, they don't want to go sit in an office. That's not what they've been doing. It's not what they like. And so one of the things I would suggest to them is to check out the training program to become a Mercedes Benz mechanic. And they're like, wait, a car mechanic? And I'd say, this is not exactly a car mechanic, because once you get through the Mercedes Benz program, you're going to start at about $80,000 a year. And if you're doing it in a market like Los Angeles, you're probably going to start at close to. Well, six- let me just tell you, it's not. It's, it's not just Mercedes Benz. My lawyer, who is a what was a big entertainment lawyer in Los Angeles, his son went to Harley Davidson School and can work on the best of motorcycles and son of a gun got a career made enough money that then he was able to take that money and invest it in something he really wanted to do so hey if if you're good with your hands if you're good with thinking out problems if you're fascinated by nailing two boards together go study learn because that's the way to go there's tremendous opportunity in all of those arenas. So let, let's let's go back a little bit, really, to the beginning. Where where did you start your professional journey? Um, I, I, you know, did you, did you did you go to college? Uh, you know, w- how did you find that experience, and and then how did you take that initial step? I went to college. I dropped out. I was bored. I was bored out of my mind. I was in the honor society. I mean, the whole thing. I had professors. My biology professor said, you know, I can see you're really bored in this class and you've got great grades. Why don't you go over to the mortuary science lab and you'll learn a whole lot more about biology over there? Actually, I did. Um, And it was a lot more interesting and more hands on, (laughs) to tell you the truth. But I I was bored out of my mind. And. (laughs) Right. It, see, I'm see the color of my face. Perfect. Um, but I always wanted to be a writer. And all during high school and college, I was a member of the newspapers, the yearbook. I loved writing. Um, not giving away my age, but when the thing was about remember the read the record backwards and. Yeah, I was one of the people who broke that story in an underground newspaper. (laughs) So I wanted to write. In the old days, nepotism was a thing. Nepotism being, if you knew somebody that worked at a company, they could probably get you in if they vouched for you. Absolutely. So, yeah, so, and it wasn't looked at as a bad thing. I still kind of think, you know, it's not a bad idea. But, uh, there was a friend of the family's who worked in the wire room of the Miami Herald, hmm. and he recommended me, and I couldn't have been more excited. I went in. They loved me. I spoke to a bunch of people. Everything was great. I was like, yes, yes, my dream's coming true. And then they said, well, we don't have any writing openings right now, but we'd love to put you in the page makeup department. Yeah. I was not real thrilled about that, but hey, it was a stepping stone to my dream. So I said, okay. I spoke to the manager who said to me, you know, I have two women working for me now. And and I think that's enough. One of them is going to retire in a year. Can I save your resume until then? Now, this wasn't in the stone age, but I knew that he couldn't do that. (laughs) I I was very young, but I knew that. So I called um, the late Elaine Gordon, who was one of the founders of the women's movement and very big in Florida. She was in the state assembly and I told her what happened. And she sent a letter to John Knight. If you have ever heard of Knight Ritter newspapers, John Knight and the mayor, the governor and everybody else in Florida, letting them know of what happened and threatened state, federal, and city lawsuits. (laughs) 
So this is how I get into, you know, oh my goodness. I'm going to give you the short story. Short story is, yes, they offered me a job, but only after a week of testing. Remember all those psychological tests and, and all the tests? I'm sure in the military, they have a lot of those tests. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and for some reason, I scored 100 percentile in marketing. I never studied marketing. I knew nothing about marketing. But for some reason, it was something that was natural to me, and, and I understood it. So mm -hmm. they offered me a job. I was the first woman in that department at the Miami Herald. They didn't like that at all. They were not pleased. Um, they gave me clients such as the burlesque theater that I had to go. I'm 22 years old. I had to go pick up money. They also gave me a territory that was a really bad territory uh, to work with the stores and advertising. But what they didn't know is I grew up in that neighborhood. So I knew every store owner. And they all supported me, did incredibly well. I turned it around, made it really big. And then, you know, all of a sudden, Miami Beach seemed like a small town to me and I wanted to move somewhere. So I started looking and I let headhunters know that I was interested in moving. I went to the library at the newspaper and looked at all the newspapers from the entire country. I thought the Los Angeles Times, that's where I'd like to work. I didn't want to live in New York. It was definitely Los Angeles. So a headhunter set up a bunch of appointments for me all around the West Coast. I met some amazing people. And one of the people used to be the uh, vice president of marketing at the Miami Herald, and he knew me. So that was quite an interesting thing. And I had got, did get an offer of a job at the at Los Angeles Times. But at the last minute, um, I was offered a job at the Los Angeles Daily News, which had just been bought by the Chicago Tribune. So I went back to my old boss, who now I knew was in California, and he could give me advice. That's why I say, always have a mentor. Uh, if you can, always find somebody you can ask questions, because you'll never have them all yourself. And he said, would you rather be a big fish in a, a, a small fish in a big sea or a little fish? Bottom line, I wanted to be a big fish in a small sea. So I went to work for the uh, Los Angeles Daily News, which I became head of special projects after being in charge of fashion advertising. And then I was in charge of their special sections area. And I worked for two years for the Los Angeles Dodgers because the, Los An the Chicago Tribune owns the Cubbies. So they had a relationship, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Not COVID allergies. <coughs> excuse me. And uh, so I had great experiences. I loved what I was doing. The special sections were advertising supplements and uh, they were with shopping centers, the regional shopping centers. The daily news was being sold. So the shopping center said to me, why don't you start your own company? We'll give you the contracts. Oh. Which was pretty scary. Because if you remember back in the day, regional shopping centers used to send out newspaper inserts, mm -hmm. color catalogs over the holidays. Those were expensive to produce. I mean, it, it was not. It's all. I knew I, I knew I could do it. Mm -hmm. So I went to a bank with the contract and a proposal to get a loan to start. And it was just me in the beginning before I hired employees. As a matter of fact, as my company grew, I even had a, a contract with the US Air Force. Wow. And the inspect I designed their road and rec magazines, flying safety magazine, 
And before I started, they sent someone from the inspector general's office to see if I was a real business. Mm -hmm. And what I had done is I had converted a two car garage and, you know, put up walls and windows and extra electricity and desks. Yeah. So it was an office and people worked there. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a jump. So there you have the steps from to become an entrepreneur. Um, my business was very successful. I was growing a lot. I was making a lot of money. I was a single mom. Mm. And I mean, I even had childcare for my employees. So it just, it was great. But then I got an offer by somebody really big, whose name I will not mention, who owned a West Coast chain. And he offered me all his shopping centers. It was one of these full color publications for the holidays were like $80,000. And that's a lot to have on your shoulders because all of Christmas lands at the same time. And so I had six clients. Can you imagine what it would have been? The stress mm -hmm. for 30. I, I mean, I knew the money was there. I knew I could make the money, but the stress, uh, when you're dealing in big money, there's a lot of stress. Absolutely. And I said, no. Mm -hmm. It was where I wanted to go. So I kept my business, stayed successful, stayed with We started doing, before it was eBay, we started doing auction web together because I didn't believe that taking a child to Toys R Us was a good thing. And for those who don't know, that was a big toy store where kids could come in and say, I want this, I want this, I want this. Oh, I didn't know they had this. And this. Yeah, I never believed in that. But we definitely knew about Barbies. So we'd go on to auction web and we'd buy Barbie clothes secondhand. I mean, hey, Barbies don't really wear out their clothes, right? So, <laughs> and we did the auctions and we played a game called Going, Going, Gone, which she learned about bidding and pricing. And then eventually we were into Star Trek too, and we had action figures. And I was also doing work for the manager of the original series, several of the stars. He was the manager of George Decay, Jimmy Doohan. Oh, okay. And uh, uh, Chekhov. Uh, I'm sorry, oh, I don't remember um, his name. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, can, I can picture his name and I can't remember it, but yes. Right. The, so the, I was selling memorabilia for them on eBay as I got into eBay. And I had a little eBay business on the side, which my daughter loved and she grew up with. And I recently just found a photo. Of, remember when you had the big world maps, you'd put it on the wall and you'd have this big map of the world. And every time we did a sale, I had her look up the zip code on Yahoo mm -hmm. and she'd put a pin in the map. Mm -hmm. And the map was very impressive. But one of the things it led her to was she said to me, Mom, why don't we have a lot of sales in Wyoming? <coughs> <coughs> so sorry. No problem. Not used to talking so much. I'm a writer. <laughs> <coughs> anyway, and... She said, probably because they don't have internet. Well, this got her into marketing, which she's very successful at, and it's been her career. She majored in in college. Mm -hmm. So it helped my daughter as well. So the eBay people, because they had just changed from auction web to eBay, mm -hmm. and I still have some great Star Trek original. I have a set of dishes from one of the movies signed by George Decay in my garage. I mean, I have got so much to sell. <laughs> Pull it out your address so you will be overrun by Trekkies. <laughs> right, no. <laughs> well, actually, uh, Sci-Fi Network was here. Because 
because I do have a collection of every Star Trek action figure ever made. Wow. So they, they photographed it. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so I was on eBay and eBay started to get big. And one day I got a call from eBay PR and they said to me, you're one of our um, big users. Would you like to be on the Today Show with Pierre? And I went, wow, the Today Show. I mean, that's when I was a kid. Yeah. I watched the Today Show. It was great. So I went on the Today Show offer to write eBay for Dummies with another author. Mm. And since my dream was always to write, I wrote that book while I was still with my agency. And... Unfortunately, my agency was me, and the reason people did business with it was me, so I couldn't sell the agency. Mm -hmm. But I did hand off clients by little, and after I didn't get a business, it was a way bestseller, series, girl boss. Um, it, it was incredible. Hmm. a career for me and something else. So customer service because my belief is e-commerce or retail the heart of it is customer service if you don't have good customer service if you don't respect your customer and that's a whole other topic you're not going to be a success so I wrote the first book that proposed doing customer service over social media and that was in 2011 and then I started branching out I still continued But eBay for Dummies in 2020. So that's great. That's still going along. And I started a series of books for seniors because I felt that not just seniors, but people over a certain age, you get to pick that age. It's not a seniors. Um, they, they need help with technology. And you read some of these books, and even in the For Dummy series, I've read some, and I went, I glazed over it, and no, that's, that's not for me. I need a simpler explanation. Mm -hmm. So I wrote, uh, I'm in the third or fourth edition of Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for seniors. Um, I just wrote Android smartphones for seniors, which, haha, -ha, is fooling my publisher, because it is already sold in three months what they had projected for a year. So wow. I'm really happy with that. And I can't talk about it, but there's a new contract sitting in my mailbox right now for another book. So by writing books, I'm able to do four months of crazy concentrated work. Mm -hmm. It's not just work. It's there's the stalling. There's the putting <laughs> things off. <laughs> My husband knows the only time silver. Yeah, it's something I love to do and it allowed me, even though my daughter had been growing up to spend more time and not be distant. And also I got into technology, which was great. And I worked with some huge companies and you can see it, visit my LinkedIn page, join me over there. I'll join you back. Just say you're a friend of Kevin's <laughs> and right. That's the key word that lets you into the club, but um, you know, a lot of big companies I've traveled the entire world, literally studying 5g and I know so much about technology and that's what spurred 
for me to write the book on Android. But unfortunately, there is not a lot of room for women in, in the industry. Uh, there's a lot of male voices. Mm-hmm. And that's difficult. And Kevin, I know you have a lot of women that probably listen to you. And women have to keep fighting. You know, we get these International Women's Day. And women wonder why they're not at the top of their field. Or women just are different. And you have to find your own way to make it to the top. It's not always the same as a man. I mean, you've interviewed women, Kevin. Absolutely. What have they told you? Uh, you know, it, it really depends. Um, so Jennifer Chang was on a few uh, few weeks ago, for example. She's the CEO of Playform.io. And, you know, Jennifer is a, a first or second generation, uh, I, be, I think it's Korean descent. Um, and so, you know, she came with a, she had certain expectations placed on her about what she should do professionally that frankly didn't make her very happy. And so it took her some time to sort of work through that to the point where, you know, she could do which, what, what was really, you know, turned her on, which was pursue um, entrepreneurial endeavors. Um, but, you know, she did a lot of, 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 you know, internships and unpaid work and just, you know, immersing herself in what she wanted to do. And now she's a CEO of a, you know, of a fantastic startup. So, um, and, and, and candidly, you know, there have men, there have been, I've interviewed men who have told me something similar. Um, so, I, I, but I, th- and I think the common theme is each one of us has to find what our path is. Exactly. You know, and, and, and my path is going to be different than yours. Um, yeah. and, and the fact that I'm a man and you're the, I don't, a woman, the, that's probably going to have some impact on what we do and how we do it or whatever. Okay. Um, but we still got to get out there and do it, right? But it was funny. Yesterday being International Women's Day, some very respected people uh, that I know in the marketing business, like David Armano, tweeted a picture of the new staff at such and such company. It was all men, all young, old men, just men. And he said, brilliant post for International Women's Day. Congratulations, guys. But that's the point. Um, I've had a tech podcast about as almost as long as Leo Laporte has had a tech podcast. And I just don't make the noise. Uh, You know, I wasn't on TV and the whole thing. But by the way, my tech podcast happens every week. It releases Sunday morning. So you can listen to it while you're laying outside, enjoying the sun or whatever you're doing. What's it called? called Computer Computer and Technology Radio. Sorry about the clumsy name, but it was named over a decade ago. And my co-host is Mark Cohen, who was on KBC for forever. And uh, we just have fun and talk about tech news. Computer Technology Radio is the name, right? Yes, and it's on every network. you get podcasts somewhere, you'll be able to find us. And Sometimes, you know, but that, then again, that's a passion project for me because mm-hmm. I also find if you're too narrow casting yourself, you are going to drive yourself crazy. I promise you. If you only have one thing going in your life, I mean, I, I read other people's book. This is Vince Cerf's book. Great book. I can highly recommend it. Um, read, study, that is the whole key, not only to keeping your brain alive and keeping your brain expanded and learning new things, but to stay relevant in society, to be able to turn to your family or to people you work with and know what's going on and be on top of things. And that will lead you to success as well. That's what also helps with social media. So you've had what, you know, some people might call, um, you know, good luck. So for example, to work you know, at the Miami Herald and then come out to Los Angeles and find out there's someone at, 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 at the LA Times, you know, that you used to work with. Some people would call that luck. I, I, to be honest with you, I don't particularly believe in luck, but I, I'm curious to know no, where do you think no those luck. things come from? How do, how do those things happen? There was no luck 
involved. I was, what, in my 20s, driving across the country to someplace in California that had earthquakes. I was freaking out. I was terrified. You just have to put your big boy or your big girl pants on and do it. Make a decision and go for it. If you fail, fail, but don't fail deeply. Go into something. Don't bet the entire bank on anything. Also, a lot of people run seminars on the internet that teach people how to do business, just like the information you're giving away free here now. And unfortunately, if those people were as good as what they're teaching at, they'd be making money doing it. You know what I'm saying, Kevin? Sure, absolutely. A lot of people in business, you know, when they get on the seminar trail, believe me, it's a lot easier to make money mm -hmm. doing that than it is to actually do the work. And I love doing the work. I get satisfaction out of it. And if you can find satisfaction in your work, so you not only make a good living, and it's within being an entrepreneur, you know, I still run an eBay business. I love it. It's something I do on the side mm -hmm. and, and I can't help myself because it's so much fun. Find things that you enjoy. And that way you can be a success. And the limit is only in your own mind. Mm -hmm. You know, all that manifesting about the Rolls Royce, the private jet. You really want that? You really want this, right, Kevin? I mean, there's a hundred things you have to worry about. Right. Realize what you need, what will serve your needs, you as a human being, because we're all different. Well, and, and, you know, and, and I, I do think that that is a key, key idea that you're bringing out. I think the probably the most difficult thing for us to do is to really figure out what does success look for me, look like for me, right? Instead of following our parents' uh, vision of success or, or worse, you know, our parents compelling us to fulfill that vision because, you know, they didn't. And so they're trying to kind of live their lives through us. That that's, that's a, from what I've seen, that's, that's an absolute road to unhappiness. And, and, and nowadays when there's virtually no rails anymore, I know, you know, look, when you and I grew up, we were in a certain direction um, because, because you're a woman, me because I was a man and you know, Jewish to boot, right? So society and our culture, our, our subculture were telling us is, well, this is what you must do, right? And now most of those boundaries are gone. And, and right, look at the president of Ukraine. Talk about a nice Jewish boy who became a comedian and is now <laughs> this awesome leader, right? Right, right, right. isn't that amazing? Right? In a country that 75 years ago, was you know complicit in the Nazi atrocities, right? And they they've got a they've got a Jew for a president, they've got a Jew for the premier a few years ago, right? So, you know these things change, and and what what what's possible for us now is is so enormous. I think it's difficult for us to get our arms around the part that's really going to satisfy us. And so, I you know we need to speak we need to spend some time thinking about that, and and that's why I so appreciate your comment about how. You know, you decided early on you didn't want to have the big the big enterprise and worrying about not only who to hire, but, you know, maybe who to fire, which may be even worse. Right. That's a lot of responsibility to carry. And you had other priorities in your life and you worked those through early on. And that, I think, too, is a very important message for all of us as we're looking for our way to wow. Right. What what really is going to make our life? Wow. Wow. That's a, I think that, and it's Can it's, I say one thing about WOW? Please. I wrote about WOW in my book. The word WOW sounds great. And when you go WOW, it feels great. But my philosophy of life is consistency. Mm -hmm. Rather than having the WOW moments, keep a consistent excellence. Give everything you can to anything you want to do. Because mm -hmm. the only way to succeed is not to have the highs of the wows, because that means there's downs. You want to have a consistent 
That's what we talk about. We have a customer service chat every Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Pacific. And we talk about that every week, that consistency in customer service is only what you give it and how your customers will trust you in the end. I mean, Kevin, that ex it goes to everything, even religion, family, trust is everything. And you have to be able to relate to your customers. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you, if, if the corporate life isn't for you, that's okay. My daughter is thriving working at a university. She loves it. Great. And good for her. I couldn't do it. I couldn't either. So, so, so just, you know, and, and I've been trying to get, because you can see over here, I've got a printout of the three pillars of attainment. Um, <laughs> actually, I revised it over the weekend. So I think it's much more relevant now than, than in the sort of the first version. And, and, and I, I need to put next to it, the way to wow, because the way to wow, actually, way stands for who are you? And wow stands for what you want. So it's not wow in the sense of fireworks going off. It's wow in the sense of understanding what do I want? What will make me happy? What will make me feel successful? What will help me if I have a family, you know, have a more meaningful family life, right? All of those things within the three pillars of attainment, um, understanding what those are for, for, you know, for each of us as an individual and, 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 I think you should you absolutely subtitle. You should ab absolutely subtitle everything you're doing with a short explanation like that. Because you know, too many people think of that, wow. But what you're saying is far deeper and far more intuitive. So if you can figure a short way to put that on everything you do, that that's the key. Yeah. So, so where, where, it, where is Marsha Collier going next? What, what, are, what are the plans for the future? Well, the truth is the world has changed mm -hmm. and it's a good time and a bad time for everybody. It's a good time for us all to sit down and think about what we want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, hopefully you have enough money to pay for your home and your food and your family and you're in a position where you can make a choice of what you're gonna do. And if you don't have enough money now and you need to make extra money, there's no sin in taking any job, anything you can take to pay your bills because I know lots of people who've done it and they were better for it because you appreciate things a whole lot more. And if you're in a job that's, almost mindless, let's say, it'll give you a lot of time to think. It'll give you time to look at people and see other people and see what they're doing. And maybe it'll help you, give you that inner insight so that you can go ahead and make a decision on what it is you really want to do. Because I'll tell you, you don't have to go to thousands of dollars worth of seminars to learn how to sell on eBay. And trust me, for my books cost you 20 bucks. They'll tell you the truth. And, and I, I've warned people about things that have come up in e-commerce, you know, small business e-commerce over the years. And that's why I don't post a lot on Facebook because I get ripped up one side and down the other from experts who are selling classes on this method and that method. And I know it doesn't work. I want to help people. And there are people you know, sometimes reading is a chore, but it's worth it. Find the right mentors, read what they have to write. I post a lot on Twitter of articles that I find. It's like I curate my own newspaper on Twitter. And Kevin, I know you have this show. Um, learn and figure out what you want to do. But it's the great resignation and whatever. Once I started my own business, and as I said, people didn't start their own businesses at home when I did. Um, I was very happy. It worked out incredibly well. And the loyalty of the people who do come and help you and work for you 
become like family. And there's a lot of alternatives. Like I said, even eBay, go thrifting, go find things. What did grandma leave you? You can sell that online. You can make your mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. Mistakes are okay. Just don't do anything illegal, okay? And, and a question comes to my mind, and I think you're actually perhaps the best person I know to, to answer this. So let's say someone decides to start a business, and maybe even it does it does well, but it, it just doesn't feel like this is really what they want to do. What, what advice would you give them then? Close it first before you close it out. I, I always say never quit your day job. So never quit what's bringing you in income until you have your plan B. I was talking to someone just yesterday. Yeah, it's tax season. And, and I'm sure you've heard of this. There's a real shortage of bookkeepers. Mm -hmm. Now there's a level above bookkeeper that's not a CPA and it's called an enrolled agent. Mm -hmm. which involves you having to go to classes at the IRS. And an enrolled agent is the only person who can actually represent you to the IRS. Mm -hmm. You know, the, that's what they do. And if you're good at numbers, wow, that's a career. I know my mother did it. And maybe you, you don't like being with a group of people. You can be at home and start this business. And once you have a certification of some sort and with all the free classes online, you can start easily. Mm -hmm. That's a job for you. It's a career that you can do. And if you don't like it, again, look for something else. Um, there's really no excuse today in the fact that there's so many classes online. I mean, even Yale, I'm taking a class at Yale wow. online. It's free. It's free, but the opportunities are there. And you can, if you need any ideas, I'm sure you can contact Kevin directly. Um, I, I'm there on Twitter at Marsha Collier. Um, people will help you because a lot of times people feel alone when they have to make a living. They don't know where to turn. They don't know what to do. Nothing wrong in being an aesthetician, a manicurist, a hairstylist. Mm -hmm. These are jobs that people need. And right now there's a shortage in almost everything. Uh, have you found that, Kevin? I, I people have. are hiring everywhere. I have. And, and um, you know, and, and, and it, 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 a lot of it is, is, is more entry level, but even in, you know, as you go up the, the, the sort of hierarchy, there are there are people who or there are positions that are that are going you know wanting. Um, I read I think it was just this morning another four million people you know quit their jobs last month. So there there's a huge churn in the workforce, which means opportunity for you know for everybody. Well, it's like going to a smorgasbord. You you don't you can. Try different jobs. You don't have to work somewhere and your goal being that you're going to have a rung of management. Learn a little bit about the business and then you can go take your online classes and then you can learn how to do that. The only thing I would tell the only job I tell somebody, you know, maybe if you want to work for somebody else, fine. But in today's environment, but I've known people who've started bakeries, food trucks. Think about all the opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, and also an important thing, don't be too good to throw away the trash. Don't be too good to sweep up. Don't be too good to be the one that cleans up. You don't have to pay people to do everything in your business. In the beginning, if you're capable of doing it, you do it yourself and that's money in your pocket. Because mm -hmm. every penny you pay out of your business is an expense. Right. And yeah, it's tax write-off, but it's money you can't pay you. Right. So right. <laughs> I've done everything that I had to do. Yeah, I've, I've emptied the waste baskets and swabbed the floor. I mean, I, look, when you're starting a business, that's what you do. 
And the other thing, this is one of the things I found, and, and, and I, I'd be interested to hear what you think about this. If, if, if you know, as, as a business owner, if we have done the various tasks or, or, you know, work that has to be done in our business, we know much better who we need to replace us in doing that as we grow, because we know, A, we know how tough it is. So we'll appreciate that someone else is doing that job now instead of us. And B, we'll really know who, 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 who would be best to do this, this kind of work, right? Because we'll have done it. And there's probably someone for, uh, what I've found is for any, everything I've ever done in any of the businesses that I've owned, I've always been able to find someone better than me at a particular task and, and sort of make myself obsolete. But you know, it's in, and it's interesting. I still do bookkeeping for my corporation. I do that because I write about it and I want the people that I'm writing to and telling about what you should do. I feel your pain. I hate bookkeeping. It's the worst. I hate tax time. Hard enough at least to give everything at the end of the year to an accountant who's going to be sure everything's okay. But you know, in, in my books, I give tips, uh, bookkeeping tips. There's chapters on, you know, um, debits and credits and all that. And yeah, I don't like it. But as a business owner, you need to know at a moment's notice how your business is doing. And although I believe in retail, the cash register metric, which is how much money you have at the end of the day, is a really good one. You have to be able to look at your expenses against your money in, to see if you are really successful. Because if you're spending way more than you're making, you don't want to end up in debt. And the way people end up with a problem is they let that debt go too far. If you stop the bleeding before, right before you're hemorrhaging everything, right. then you have a better chance at turning things around or just cutting the, closing the wound, end it. So, you know, unfortunately, we are just about out of time. I know you had thought that an hour would be a long time, but I, it, 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 yeah, zoomed, it right? went by so fast. Yeah, we could do, I'm sure we could do another, you know, two or three hours, but I, I do. I, so what I always do at the end is I, I do want to take just a couple of minutes and sort of summarize um, several of the points that you brought out. So one of them, I think that's so important is we really need to understand what will make us happy, what will make us satisfied with our work. That, that may be the best lesson that you've, you've brought out uh, you know, this afternoon. The second thing is to learn as much as we can about whatever it is we think we want to do. Start there and also try and get some, even if it's low level experience in the area, to get that real world experience. Yes, uh, uh, Marsha? <laughs> Yeah, I just want to add one thing. You know, I subscribe to a lot of varying publications of both sides. Of, I don't just, you know, go in a political line or anything. But one of the best things I did is Wall Street Journal delivers a newspaper on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Now, newspaper, who reads a newspaper? I do. But when you get a paper, newspaper your news is not being curated by a piece of paper and you choose what you want to read mm -hmm. there's a lot of value in that and i've learned so much about topics i would have never read about by reading an actual newspaper absolutely yes private uh, online is good too but they just happen to send one free every week <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I get the, the Wall Street Journal, you know, six days a week that it's published and, and, and read it, you know, quite, quite avidly. And, and like you always find things in there to read. And it's, it's good to read about something I know nothing about, because then I can take that new knowledge and apply it to whatever I'm working on and perhaps generate a new idea. And so I think that that goes in perfectly with your idea about learning as much as you can, trying to keep your eyes, you know, keep the blinders off of our eyes. And then I think the other thing, and, and, and other, people have, other people have said this, is um, we, we, we need to just sort of take that step forward and, and not be afraid that we're, we're going to fail or it's not going to work. Take the step forward, give it a shot. If it doesn't work, 
okay. So then, you know, try something else and, and, and not be afraid. Cut your losses early. <laughs> What's that? Cut your losses early. Exactly. Fail fast, right? Is I think that's the new catchphrase, fail fast. And, and, right. and, you know, and, and then, you know, go on to the next thing. And if it's, if, if we go into a business and it doesn't work, so maybe we'll go work for someone for a while and then we can try a business again. I know people who have done that back and forth. Um, and, and they've had very, very successful and satisfying careers over the long term. And, and that's really what this is too. It's, it's our life, right? It's not, it's not about, you know, hitting that home run at the age of 25 and, and I don't know, sitting back on the beach for the next, you know, 85 years or something. I, I'm not sure that that's a play well People live. who want to retire at the age 40. I don't know what you do, folks. I, I don't understand the retirement, the whole thing. I, I keep trying to retire, but I can't do it. <laughs> I probably, I'd probably drive my daughter crazy if I retired. <laughs> She's like, Daddy, go do something. <laughs> <laughs> I already well, drive my daughter crazy. So. Yeah. Well, that's that is all the time we have for today, and and I I forgot to check out who my guest is next week. Uh, oh, so I do not have a guest next week. Next week, I'm going to be talking about how to uh, start and build the kind of relationships we need in order to gain the kind of professional success that we want. So um, uh, I'm gonna show you how to use LinkedIn to do that. And then I have a, a, a system that I adopt, adapted um, based on Judy Robinette's uh, system. I'll talk about Judy's book because um, it's, it's one of the best resources on developing professional relationships. So please do tune in next week, again, 1230 Pacific, 3.30 Eastern time for the Way to Wow show, People Making Money. And it, it'll be me and we'll talk about how to create relationships. So as, as the last few seconds tick off here, Marsha, thank you, thank you, thank you. I know I've been trying to get you on the show for a while and you've, had, you've been writing books and you've been busy. So I appreciate you taking the time to, to be with me today. Everybody, a tip, reach out to people on Twitter that you either admire or you like what they're doing and don't give up, like their stuff, comment, do, do whatever you can to get their attention because that's how Kevin and I met each other and we made the connection and now we have a life connection and I'm sure a work connection if we needed to. Mm -hmm. But you see, that's the way to do it. And I think LinkedIn has a little bit turned into a spam farm on mm -hmm. stories on Twitter. A great way to connect with people, connect with people you didn't know. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Excellent tip. So that just leaves me to say, again, thank you, Marsha. I really appreciate you being on the show. Um, Marsha's Twitter handle will be in the show comments for those of you who want to follow Marsha, but it's it's just at Marsha Collier on Twitter. And, and I, I, I follow Marsha both in the Way to Wow show feed and in my own personal feed. And she always has fantastic resources and things to, to stimulate um, your ideas. So encourage you to, to, to follow Marsha and, and keep track of, of you know, what, her, what her next things are. And that just leads me to say, as I, as I try and remember to do each week, um, this is kind of my own little piece of gratitude, a very important uh, woman in my life, um, my, my very dear, dear friend, Marie, who, who really made a difference in my life. And, and I just want to remind her as she's uh, up in heaven, hopefully watching down on us, Marie, my dear, you are still my bell. Thank you so very, very much for joining me, Marsha. All of you watching, thank you very, very much for joining us today. And hopefully we will see you next week. Oh, and I, should, I, should, I shouldn't forget to mention, tomorrow at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern, my colleague, Leah Siegel, will be doing um, her show, The Way to Wow Show, Securing Your Financial Foundation. Her guest is Dina Martin, and I think you will find that she she is an amazing, amazing person. She is a, an absolute expert in, in bringing financial literacy to people. And so uh, please join us um, on, on uh, Dina, um, I mean, on Leia's show tomorrow when she talks to Dina. And then uh, and we'll be doing this again next week as well. So thank you all for watching. Marsha, thanks again. Can't, cannot thank you enough. And everyone, please enjoy the rest of your day.